誒、呃、財委會嘅特別會議第八個環節開始啦。誒、呃、今日時間係由誒、呃、第呢一本節嘅時間係由八點三十分至到十點嘅。誒、呃、呢、這個會議咧就誒、呃、按常慣常嘅。嗯、um, ，Members,、uh, please take your seats. And according、uh, to the purpose of this special FC,、um, we are to scrutinise the budget estimates 2014-15 to make sure that allocation given to the administration in 2014-15 will not be more than is necessary for the relevant policies. Depending on members、uh, who want to speak, I will、um, allocate time to members. Please press the request to speak button. Let me remind you that your question should be directly related to the budget estimates. If you want to follow up on members、um, on the administration's written replies, please quote the serial number, say D E V B W. And、uh, to facilitate the proceedings, members and officials can refer to the screen on the tabletop,、um, and the、um, clerk will also. Uh, cast the reply serial number on the screen、um, in the chamber, and if time is not enough, members may follow up at the relevant meetings of the panel or may ask、uh, written questions. I now invite the secretary for development to give a short briefing. Let me stress a short briefing in terms of works. The first part is on works. As for planning and land issues, they will be dealt with in the next session. So,、um, over to you,、um, the director of bureau. Thank you, chairman.、Uh, members of the FC, good morning. I'd like to thank members for their interest in the draft estimate of the development bureau. The heads of the works departments and I have provided replies to. Um, the 144 written questions raised by members, accounting for the use of resources in the works portfolio, we will respond to any further questions. In 2014-15, the Development Bureau's recurring expenditure of works portfolio is $9,914.15 million, representing an increase of $352.81 million, or 3.7%. Over the、um, revised estimate 2013-14, the additional provision mainly to meet、uh, mainly for meeting the increase of expenditure 176.76 million for purchasing Dongjiang water under the water agreement scheme, as well as expenditure for additional services supposed to provide support for strategy of increasing land supply and to implement other works related issues. Since I have already given you a speaking note, I will not go over the details. I leave more time to members、uh, to ask questions. I now open the floor to members.、Uh, four minutes for each member,、uh, Mr. Sin Chung Kai. My question is in relation to the speaking notes. On、uh, page nine, the secretary mentions several reclamations. Assessments、uh, will be made. In particular, Longku Tan, Siu Ho Wan, and Sunny Bay. Please speak closer to the microphone. Now, uh, uh, page nine of the Chinese version at the bottom,、um, Longku Tan, Siu Ho Wan, and Sunny Bay、uh, were mentioned by the secretary. If there is reclamation. And if it can pass, if they can pass the、um, EIA, how many hectares will be reclaimed? You also mentioned the artificial island. How many hectares、uh, will be reclaimed, and how much money involved?、Uh, the Prime Secretary will answer the question. Yes, thank you. We don't have any specific.、Um, Area for the reclamation from 2011 to 2013, we completed our first round of consultation, and basing on public opinion and basing on their preference, on the choice of location, we've、uh, chosen five coastal areas and one、uh, in the central waters. And next year,、uh, we will come for a detailed study. Before we can decide on the areas or the size of reclamation, but you say it will accommodate、uh, tens of thousands of 
people. There should be a ballpark figure. There should, is there any uh, rough estimate? At present, there is no any. Uh, there is no rough estimate, even for central reclam uh, reclamation in the central waters, whether it's one artificial island or m several artificial islands. We only have very preliminary study, and we don't want to disclose the figures before any detailed study. You now you say public consultation or public engagement second phase it has been completed, and there are objections. I know that some uh, who object uh, may not fully understand the administration's plan, but in the um, public engagement process, how can you address uh, such views? In the uh, first and second phase of public engagement exercises, they are more macro. When we have exact choice of sites, uh, when we have more details, we will discuss that with the public. Uh, the objections can be divided into two ways, uh, two, two categories. One, technical objective issues and subjective issues, such as um, um, cultural ambience and also um, an appearance and things like that. Um, we will further consult the public when we have more details. The next, Mr. Wong Kok Heng. Thank you, Chairman. I have two questions for the administration. The first one is in relation to uh, speaking notes, page 5 of the Chinese version. He says that um, we need to make full use of the supplementary labor scheme to import skilled labor in a timely manner. Can he clarify this? Will he expand the importation of labor, undermining the job opportunities, wages, and welfare of the local workers? The FTU strongly opposes the expansion of importation of foreign labor. I hope the Secretary will clarify his point. Here, the second question is in relation to the WSD Water Services Department. Now, it's said that there will be an increase of water tariffs or water charges, but in terms of uh, improving the provision of seawater for flushing. The administration has not given any reply. The administration is on, uh, has done something in terms of replacing old water mains, but uh, and also desalination is so also um, not um, um, fully uh, up and running. I just want to know. Whether um, um, the flushing issue, um, flushing water issue, uh, uh, why there is no progress? Is there any preparation for increase in fees and charges? As for importation of labor, uh, in my speaking notes and also in answering members' questions at meetings of other panels, I said that without affecting the reasonable income and job opportunities of local workers. Uh, work, uh, foreign workers may be imported, and the need has been explained to members in respect of importation workers. Whether uh, they, uh, it is, uh, they are public works or whether there are uh, construction works in the private sector, workload is heavy in the coming uh, years. The administration since 2010-11 has invested a lot of money in the CIC and has worked with the CIC to provide training to more young people in Hong Kong. But uh, in the uh, construction industry, there is mismatching. Young workers trained up are uh, semi-skilled workers. They need time uh, to mature to become skilled workers. In the coming few years, um, um, basing on the forecast done together with the CIC, we can see that there is quite a huge pressure on the uh, lack of skilled workers, and therefore we need to import workers. The Director of Water Services. Thank you, Chairman. Concerning the reduction of using um, potable water to do flushing, in fact, 23% uh, is done by uh, flushing is done by seawater, and we are 
uh, extending the population coverage from 80 percent to 85 percent. Last year, we've uh, extended the uh, flushing seawater flushing arrangement to Pofulam. Uh, next year, we'll extend it to NT West Yun, covering Yunlong and Tin Sui Wai, and then we'll extend it to Tong Chong after a few years' time. And, uh, by using seawater, we, we have seawater replacing uh, potable water for flushing, and your time is up. Uh, next, Mr. Gary Fan. I want to follow up on DVBW114. It is about a desalination plant in Chengkwano, and my concern is about cost effectiveness. According to your reply, can you tell me the numbers? Uh, what is the uh, cost per 1,000 cubic meters of uh, fresh water? And what is the number you think that is cost effective and technically feasible? Do you have any quantifiers? Um, in terms of that, and is there any possibility of shortening um, the study? And in that study, what reference will be made uh, to other countries in terms of new technology used in desalination? In the study, uh, concerning the study, will the administration need uh, to do planning, investigation, study, and completion of construction before you negotiate with the mainland on the reduction of buying Dongjiang water. Will it be done in phase, or will it only be done after the completion of the desalination plant? The DSW, a DWS, on cost effectiveness. We are still conducting a review. By the end of this year, early next year, we will complete the study. In 2012-13, the cost for the desalination per, per cubic meter is 12 to 13 dollars, still above eight um, something um, of Dongjiang water, and we are seeing. We were trying to find out whether uh, the number can, numbers can be brought closer. As for shortening the timetable, we plan to complete our study early next year. Um, as for our first phase of production in 2020, that's only a plan. As for overseas experience, we made reference to Israel, U.S., the U.S., and Australia. And we um, they adopt reverse osmosis uh, for desalination. In the first phase of um, production, um, the plant can only provide 5% of our total water supply. In the second phase, only 9% altogether. Uh, we still rely on the Dongjiang water supply. In tandem, we are doing the negotiation. By the end of this year, the agreement will come to an end. Uh, Mr. Chairman, he is very quick and he is not very loud. Uh, I only uh, heard eight point five dollars, uh, and what about the other numbers? You mentioned Israel and Australia. What is the second one? Israel, the U.S., and Australia. With the first answer you mentioned eight fifty. I think you mentioned two numbers. In twenty third, uh, twelve thirteen, the uh, cost for the salination is about twelve dollars. With the change in technology, we see whether there is room for adjusting the cost. As for Dongjiang uh, water, uh, the cost is about $8.6. Um, you need to be close to the microphone, even if you can speak very quickly. Mr. Chen Kam Lam, I am concerned about the development of Kowloon East. The Secretary, in his speaking notes, on page 12 of the Chinese version, mentioned the new Kai Tech or Kowloon East. Uh, the progress of land sale is very slow. Just three lots were sold uh, in the previous two years, and next year there will be two lots, and in 2016 there will be a little bit. Why the sale of land is so slow? They go going. Uh. 
there is keen demand for increasing land supply, and the uh, office uh, for energizing Kowloon East have been set up for quite some time. Um, and I'd like to know what, uh, why the progress is so low and whether it can be expedited. And also, during the consultation, 75 fora uh, workshops, etc., were held. 2,900 people attended. So uh, I'd like to know why the cost effectiveness is so low. You have over 75 fora and workshops, etc., with attendance of 2,900, so on average, just um, less than 40 per session. So despite all the efforts and publicity made, I'd like to know uh, the effectiveness. Secretary. Chairman, on the sale of land in Kowloon East, energizing Kowloon East in the area, including Kuantong, we don't have much government land, and the transformation of the area mainly involves redevelopment. And in the action area, there are some government facilities. Earlier, we attended the electoral meetings and explained to members that in the coming years, these government facilities will be relocated and the sites can be vacated. But that takes time. As for Kaitak de development area, there are some uh, works all ongoing, for example, Shatin Central Link. As works are in progress, we need to wait for um, certain stages of works to be completed before sites can be made available for sale. We will expedite the progress. As for the consultation fora and uh, um, sessions conducted by the Energizing Kowloon East Office, I'll defer to my uh, colleague to uh, take this question. Now about this consultation exercise, we have around 75 fora workshop exhibitions and briefing sessions, etc. Apart from that, we also had different community activities. We had 35 of them, and in the activities, um, well, they came in various forms, like uh, music, uh, musical and dance, and performance, etc. Well, you don't need to give us the details, because um, the more details you give, I have the impression that you're not uh, actually on the right track. Energizing colonies has nothing to do with developing new communities. My suggestion is that you review your uh, objectives and focus more on Kuantong, Wong Tai Sin, Kowloon City, together with Kai Tech Development Area. In terms of their development, how uh, they can be coordinated and more studies should be done and the communities should be consulted. I think this will be more beneficial. Next, Dr. Kenneth Chan. I'd like to ask about uh, question number 030, about uh, saving water. Well, I've also asked some questions, but um, on this question, I'd like to know more about the expenditure involved in promoting saving water. Now, the uh, expenditure has increased from 7.9 million to uh, 12.6 million. And, uh, Secretary, you will know that there is a program called Let's Save 10 Liter Water. And this is a very popular program. This will help mem um, members of the public understand the uh, usage of water. But the problems uh, are that um, the phone calls are not pick up, picked up, um, the fax machines cannot be used, and there is a seven-member uh, dedicated uh, a team dedicated to the promotion on water conservation. It's written here. I got in touch with them, and I was given to understand that the fax machine couldn't work, and uh, another number was given, given to residents. Now, uh, I understand that you might not be able to reply to all the emails uh, because there, um, you received uh, many of them. Now, 30 um, residents could take part in uh, this uh, campaign. Uh, it's expected. 
they're expected to um, take part in the campaign, but there, it seems that there is a gap here on the um, provision of manpower, um, resources, etc. You cannot catch up with the demand, so will you consider allocating more resources to cope with the demand, or are you going to say today that, I'm sorry, we have um, enrolled 30,000 households and please don't send us more emails and uh, faxes because we're going to cope with the demand. Sorry, speaker's not coming through. Let's save 10 liter water. The campaign uh, received very keen response, more than we expected. We received over 60,000 households applying for participation in the campaign. Of course, we are verifying uh, whether all these 60,000 households are registered users under the uh, WSD, and we have also allocated uh, internal or deployed internal resources to cope with the demand. We hope that um, the general public can save 10 liter water a day, and it's hope that uh, uh, they can save through water for conservation measures at least two liters. And most applications were received by email on uh, the telephone line and uh, the fax machine. We will consider how we can um, increase resources. Now, as director puts it, the expected uh, participating households w were originally 30,000. Now you have 60,000. So response is very keen. Um, would you? rather say that you have no more resources to cope with um, more demand. Uh, the reason is very simple. The government has announced that the water charges will be increased and uh, members of the public would save uh, water to save the co um, for, uh, to save uh, paying uh, less uh, charges. When we first floated this uh, idea, the particip we we expected more than 30,000 households. So initially, we're going to enroll 30,000, and depending on the response, we will gradually increase the number. Mr. Temu Chung, second page of the speaking notes, I have two questions on it. I'd like to ask Secretary whether my observation is correct. In terms of the capital works expenditure, um, normally, it's uh, close to 30 to 40 billion dollars, but now uh, we have reached 70 billion dollars with such a substantial increase. Definitely, there will be a shortage of manpower, and you'd like to uh, have importation of ma labor. And the public has expressed concern. And overall speaking, the uh, costs would uh, spiral, causing um, a lot of projects to go over the budget. And you'd like to attract more new blood to the construction industry. Now, what if the number of projects decrease over the years? There will be um, workers in the construction sector becoming unemployed. Then that would cause a big problem. So on this uh, foreseeable problem, um, what is your view? And for Liantang, uh, BCP, and uh, for this project, it has gone over the budget as well. And I've read uh, recently uh, from newspapers that it seems residents from Liantang, uh, Hang Yun Wai, um, also have strong objections. I'll defer to the PS. On capital works expenditure, on the whole, um, it stood at about 30 billion dollars. However, uh, taking, uh, setting aside inflation, in fact, for a um, level of 30 billion dollars, um, uh, the number of projects have actually gone down and the uh, uh, GDP on uh, ratio have um, increased from or decreased from six point two seven percent in the nineteen eighties to two point eight two point five percent in twenty o eight, and we've recently increased the ratio to some three or four percent, and this figure shows us that in terms of investment in hardware, indeed, uh, 
we have yet to catch up uh, with uh, the demand, and we need to increase supply, therefore, and we are going to um, work with the CIC. We have prepared the 10-year uh, um, projection on the demand for um, uh, in the construction industry is available on the website, and we're talking about a range of 160 to 180 billion dollars, both in the public and private sector. So, if we want to maintain a high level of uh, investment in infrastructure, we need to increase manpower. And recently, we have s um, suggested uh, the making full use of the supplementary labor scheme (SLS) and. Together with the business sector, employers, government departments, and the most uh, representative labor unions, including uh, one under the uh, FTU and two other labor unions, we looked at the um, sectors experiencing manpower shortage. And we have recently announced the 26 um, occupations uh, experiencing labor shortage. So if Labor shortage only uh, occurs in particular uh, occupations, and if we suppress um, demand uh, on uh, pro projects, it will affect uh, workers in other sectors, and that's why we would like to uh, rely on the SLS, Mr. Yipkokim. I'd also like to ask questions on the uh, Secretary's speaking notes on page 10 in the Chinese version. They were, um, it said that uh, they will actively explore the potential of developing underground spaces in urban areas, and I strongly support this suggestion. But can you give us more details? Do you say that in, uh, the uh, study has commenced uh, since uh, late 2013, and about this uh, strategic uh, study? In the latter half of uh, 2014, uh, it will be uh, proceeded with on four strategic districts, namely Cosby Bay, Happy Valley, Emerald T1, Chai North, and Chimsa Chai West. The other question is about page 14 of the Chinese version of the speaking notes. Now, I am happy to see that the, about the uh, aging of uh, water mains. So far, 2,354 kilometers of water mains have been replaced or rehabilitated. In the central and western district, there is a huge problem with water leakage or bursting of water mains. Now, you have. Um, are you going to have some new programs, for example, monitoring water main pressure to? Uh, to minimize the problem, or how are you going to allocate uh, resources more effectively to prevent the problem and prevent nuisance to the public and the traffic, and so that water supply will not be affected? On page 18 and page 19 of the speaking notes in the Chinese version on heritage conservation, I see that a lot has been done. In the central and western district, I'd like to ask about the central market. The URA is um, proceeding with the project. The progress is very slow. So, uh, more or less, the whole building will be demolished for uh, redevelopment. Now, how are you going to assess the public money and time spent on the project? Thank you. On developing underground space and the study involved, I will defer to the director uh, to take this question. Now, on uh, the laying of water mains, I'll defer to the director of water services. What about the market? All right, you. So please be brief. Three officials. Now, a brief um, word on uh, underground space. Since the last, uh, since the end of last year, we started a, a study uh, to explore the strategic. Uh, districts for developing underground space. We'd like to see whether um, the underground spaces can accommodate more business development or commercial development. And the study uh, commenced last year. Those districts were um, are uh, more crowded as for the strategic districts, as mentioned by the honourable member. We're going to. Apply for funding application to conduct a more detailed study. 
For these districts, we see opportunities in developing underground space, and we will come back to the panel uh, for a more detailed briefing. So I will maybe I'll wait for that time. On the lane of water mains, we have been able to complete 80 percent. The remaining 20 percent will be completed by next year. Uh, including central and western district in Park Fulham, water mains will be replaced or rehabilitated. As for water main pressure, we will divide Hong Kong into 900 uh, areas, and we have completed 100 or so uh, districts uh, or areas in uh, up, uh, in uh, monitoring water main pressure, and we will proceed with the remaining areas ha um, conserving the uh, central market. Because the uh, central OZP is being uh, 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 subject to judicial challenge, so the progress is slow. Um, re reply serial number DEVBW059. I have several questions. In 2014, uh, 2013-14, uh, repair maintenance uh, $17 million in comparison with uh, 2012, 13, an, an increase of very of six million dollars, rather substantial. Next year, another seventeen million dollars. Why there is such a substantial increase in uh, this financial year? In the past three years, as for those visiting heritage uh, sites, about um, five hundred seventy thousand people. Next year, about the same. But in terms of uh, conservation of heritage, according to speaking notes, there are more and more new heritage items. With more heritage items, I think there should be more visitors. Why it is still maintained at a very low level? Now, uh, there may be some tens or even just a few uh, visitors per historic monument. If we just spend, if we spend so much resources, whereas uh, there are so few visitors, uh, how can you increase the number of visitors? In 2014, the administration will continue to invest one million dollars to organize the heritage fiesta. If the uh, outcome is not so. Um, good. Uh, will you consider working with the trade and also the tourism board so as to uh, raise the number of visitors? I'll ask Mr. Lam, the um, permanent secretary, uh, the, the uh, deputy secretary, to answer the question. I thank uh, the member for the question concerning the uh, expenditure on conservation of heritage. Now we. Uh, vary the expenditure according to uh, demand. It doesn't mean that if uh, there is, uh, or rather, uh, if there is a slowdown or decline in number of works or increase in number of works, and uh, the amount of expenditure will uh, have will vary as well. Um, the actual expenditure is based on progress of works. Uh, we will continue to invite proposals. If it is in, a, uh, say, um, when it is in the stage of planning, the expenditure will be lower. When it is in the actual repair and maintenance, the amount will increase. The second question is on the number of visitors to the uh, heritage sites or historic monuments. We work with the AMO, and uh, they welcome visitors. As for some heritage sites, they are not like museums which can accum accommodate a lot of people at one time. Uh, usually, there are more visitors during weekends and public holidays. Uh, having said that, we'll consider we will continue to work with the AMO to do more promotion and publicity, and we wish more young people. Uh, and students who come to visit um, these uh, heritage sites. As for cooperation with the uh, tourism board on promoting heritage uh, tourism, uh, that's something uh, on which we attach importance. We have worked with the tourism board in the past, and we will look forward to doing so in the future. Mr. Tony Chair. 
Um, Chairman, I want to follow up on a few questions I've answered. First one, BVBW053. It's about uh, Kowloon East promoting walkability. I know that there are short, uh, medium to long term arrangement, including a uh, environmentally friendly link. With regard to um, enhancing pedestrian link, the administration has, the, has adopted a narrow mindset. It only considers uh, footbridges. It has not considered the appearance, the connectivity, and also the convenience provide, um, of location. If you just consider um, footbridges in terms of uh, under walkability, it will be too narrow. Uh, you need to consider how uh, the facilities can be in harmony with the neighboring uh, circumstances. And the second question is DVBW055. It is about mutual recognition of professional qualifications and registration, uh, and also the right to practice in, res uh, in respect of the mainland. As for mutual professional recognition, 1,490. And then uh, 250 have reg uh, registered to practice in the mainland, as in Guangdong. As for Guangdong, the number is on the low side. Um, there are over 500 qualified members, and only a, a very small number can practice in Guangdong. Uh, how can you help uh, professionals uh, to start their business in Guangdong? Uh, Chairman, concerning the uh, second question, I will speak on it first. As for mutual recognition, um, in Guangdong, uh, the number is smaller in the pilot scheme. Uh, that uh, The pilot scheme was after SIPA, and um, the details have to be ironed out, and that uh, uh, takes time. As for architectural firms, um, they have already uh, had a breakthrough, and having established uh, such precedents, will continue uh, with great efforts to promote this, and uh, and then we'll con uh, we will review the situation and see if that can be expanded to places outside Guangdong. Um, the Perm Secretary will speak on uh, walkability of Kowloon East. Concerning walkability of Kowloon East, I fully agree with Mr. Tony Chair. Improving pedestrian environment is not only dependent on footbridges in Kowloon East. There are two consultancy studies. One is going on, the other will soon be launched. Um, apart from strengthening footbridges or footbridge networks, what other means uh, can be adopted is the issue. And uh, with the setting up of the EKEO, um, together with the district office, a review has been conducted on Kow uh, Kowloon Bay and Kun Tong. In fact, they've looked, in, looked at more than uh, 40 um, junctions. And uh, we also look at the back lanes and see how the back lanes can be used to improve the walking environment. With the completion of the study, I believe there will be a series of improvement measures to the pedestrian network. Well, we don't want to be just a uh, footbridge city. Next, Mr. Martin Liao, I have two uh, follow-up questions. First, DVW032 about greening. Um, um, a, large, uh, a, lar a large number of uh, planting of shrubs have been completed, including um, the cruise terminal building. It is expected a number of shrubs planted in 2014 will be reduced by 1.2 million plants. The reduction of 1.2 million plants. There is such a re big reduction. Will there be any compensatory arrangement, say, planting uh, 1.2 million shrubs in other places? If there is, uh, can the Bureau provide the details? If not, then why not? The second question 
is in respect of DEVB 0033. The reply by the Bureau is that there will be a time-limited uh, SEO post um, to uh, provide the necessary support to the uh, Working Group on Professional Services under the Economic Development Commission and also um, um, deal with other market liberalization measures in the mainland overseas. What, is it, what do you mean by other market liberalization measures? As for greening or planting of shrubs, Mr. Lam will reply. Uh, there will be a decline in number of shrubs uh, to be planted. We are talking about the new planting of shrubs. It doesn't mean that we reduce the total number of shrubs. Now we reduce the number because of the progress of works. Uh, major planting projects have been completed this year. Therefore, uh, yes, Chairman, uh, that's already in the written reply. I hope he can answer the question point, point blank. Is there any compensation in terms of reduction of planting? As for the second part in this year, whether there will be new items at the previous um, development panel meeting, the uh, greening master plan of the NT will be implemented before the end of the year. We can complete the tendering exercise so that we can start with um, the GMP in new territories. And that includes a large number of shrubs and other trees. What about uh, other, the other question? Concerning his uh, second question, Mr. Chairman, the Working Group on Professional Services of the EDB covers not only the construction industry, it also covers um, accounting and uh, legal services, so on and so forth. Um, the working group discussed uh, the ways and means of helping professionals going into the overseas markets. Emphasis shouldn't just be put on the mainland, but also on other parts of the world. Different, uh, of course, the professional, the profession, the situation of the professions vary, uh, varies. And um, we are having a um, stronger link with the ASEAN, and uh, we are trying to uh, make some uh, breakthrough uh, for certain uh, for various professions. The TDC and the ETOs of the um, government uh, will also play a part in that. Uh, that's um, we have completed the first round, and now we begin the second round. Three minutes each, Mr. Sin Chung Kai. Concerning the uh, price of Dongjiang water, from 2009 to uh, 24, uh, 2013, the accumulated increase was 26 uh, percent, and that uh, was higher than Hong Kong's inflation rate. Probably that was because of inflation in the mainland. Um, is the or uh, is the price increase of Dongjiang water faster than the rate of inflation in the mainland? Is there any way to control the cost, or uh, can we uh, impose a limit on the increase of price per year so that it will not be um, higher than inflation? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. The price of Dongjiang water. Is based on the agreement. Uh, Mr. Lam can speak on this. Uh, the director, with regard to the Dongjiang Water Agreement, we have a clause for price adjustment. Uh, that is based on the cost of maintaining the Dongjiang water supply system. We look at the change in price indices of the two places, and. We are, um, this is a, a an adjustable mechanism. Um, prices can go upwards and downwards. Over the years, the annual increase is about five to six percent. In the last round, when we came to the LegCo 
Uh, well, before we came to let's go, we had talked to the economists, and they were of the view that the price increase was reasonable. Xu Jing. Next, Mr. Wang Guoheng. Chairman, I'd like to follow up on the question I asked in the first round about increasing water charges and water conservation. Just now, Director, in his reply to my question, said that the percentage in relation to um, flushing with potable water, well, um, it has come down. Uh, now it has reached 85 percent, but it's still unknown when we will reach 100 percent on water conservation. Now, I'd like to know whether we have really um, made enough promotional effort. Chairman, we have six sessions of special finance committee meetings today. For each session, uh, we have we are provided with um, a new glass. Uh, but since I have been here, I have been uh, using my own mug, so to speak, a souvenir from the uh, shop uh, downstairs so that uh, I don't need to change my glass um, every for every session. So this is just an example on promoting water conservation. Has the government uh, been taking the lead? If it hasn't, then why is the government suggesting that water charges should go up? How can the government convince members of the public? My question is on how we can do a better job in promoting water conservation. Before completing this effort, we should not uh, ask for increase in water charges. So any policy uh, in this regard? Mr. Lam. Now, thank you, a member, for your support on water conservation. You are right in pointing this out. We need to promote water conservation in a sustainable manner, and we should strengthen this uh, uh, our effort. And we have launched the Let's Save 10 Litre Water uh, campaign this year. It mainly targets domestic households. As for non-domestic households, uh, they may require um, more uh, initiatives. We will work with the catering industry and the hotel industry uh, in exploring uh, on what areas water can be conserved. And some guidelines will be prepared, and the industries are willing to uh, co cooperate with us. And once the guidelines on water conservation are prepared, I believe it will be very beneficial to promoting water conservation in non-domestic households. Now, for government departments, we also have started water conservation measures in some of the government departments, so we will continue to work on that. As for uh, flushing with uh, salt water or sea water, we hope that in the long run, non-potable water can also be used uh, for some remote areas, uh, like uh, near the hillside, etc. It may be more difficult for us to uh, reach 100%. All right, next member. Uh, first round, first, Mr. Jeffrey Lam. Thank you, Chairman. Recently, I learned from newspapers that uh, there is an issue with the ecology uh, in the uh, reservoirs, and some members asked about the number of um, turtles and also the uh, health of plants and uh, other living organisms in country parks. Now, I don't see um, much response from the administration. Members ask those questions uh, for perhaps um, their, out of their um, interest to know more, but it also has to do with our reservoirs, uh, on the management of our parks, etc. Public money is involved. So can more be done uh, in promotion? We're all concerned about water in reservoirs. Water is a necessity. So can more resources be deployed 
to enhance publicity so that members don't need to ask such questions and public money can be saved in the long run. Uh, there will be more in our fiscal reserve. So more money spent on publicity. Mr. Lam, uh, Director, please tell us something about uh, your promotion work. Now, members write uh, in pointing out that it is important. Uh, I mean, rest of us are important as they provide uh, potable water for our use. So on their ecology, we also need to do more. And there are some uh, uh, algae um, uh, and... Uh, and we rely on fish uh, to um, set the ecological balance. And we also do more in terms of uh, conservation and improve uh, water quality. Second round, Dr. Kenneth Chen. On heritage conservation policy, towards the end of the Secretary speaking notes, he talks about uh, reviewing the um, policy and um, I have also taken part in the some of the uh, meetings activities however this policy is still in the pipeline we really need to review the policy now my understanding is that towards the end of last year or early this year this report should have been submitted to you secretary for you to make the decision within this financial year to launch a public consultation. We see the example of Ho Tong and we're disheartened. This is a private property uh, which carries a conservation or heritage uh, value. And uh, we need to discuss how uh, we strike a proper balance. And we also need to forge a consensus. Now, here it says that uh, the AAB, the Antiquities Advisory Board, will be invited to discuss in detail. Now, do you have a timetable when this proposal will be um, made available for consultation? Now, the AAB has done a lot of work. Their next step is that in the coming month or two, a public education and publicity campaign will be launched on heritage conservation for the general public to know more about this issue, for them to have more information. By the middle of this year, the relevant document, uh, uh, consultation document will be issued for public consultation. A follow-up, Chairman. Has the administration reserved resources for the consultation work which will commence in the middle of this year? That is a public engagement exercise. Yes, resources will be reserved, including the publicity and education campaign uh, to be launched in the month or so. In the coming two or three months, public education and publicity uh, effort will be made, after which a report will be submitted to the Development Bureau. And following that, as I mentioned, by the middle of this year, uh, there will be a public consultation. Thank you, Secretary. I'd like you to clarify the reply 056 in reply to members' questions. You said that no allocation has been reserved for follow-up work. So please, uh, maybe you should correct this uh, answer because there is a uh, public expectation. So please make it clear because just now you said that re resources will be reserved. Chairman, we have reserved resources but not additional resources for this purpose. Yes, you have reserved resources but not additional resources. All right, Mr. Tam Yu Chong. I asked about uh, Lian Tang, BCP. Uh, in the uh, previous round, uh, no time for them to answer. I'll give some time for them to answer. Permanent Secretary, I'll defer to the Director of uh, CED to take this question. For Lin Tang, BCP, after we attended the electrical meeting last time, we went back and considered whether we could fine tune the proposal and found no, no alternative. I will defer to the director to give you more details. Lian Tang BCP, as 
Permanent Secretary mentioned in January, we attended the development panel meeting and explained about um, the uh, over budget, and the panel members uh, urged us to uh, better control costs. And I'd like to explain in more detail that this project spans or consists of a link of uh, 11 kilometers. And this is important. This is also an important infrastructure in the North District. It is costly because uh, there are not ex uh, there are no existing um, uh, roads in that part, and th we're just pioneering uh, this project ahead. So we've been asked to consider whether there are better options, but the chance is slim. Uh, it seems that there is no alternative. But we'll go back to the panel and explain to members uh, about the situation. The other part of the question is about Chukyun village. And some villages uh, would like to know about their village, um, the reprovisioning of their village. We have been liaising with uh, their villages, and they told us that um, it seems that the uh, time um, allowed for reprovision reprovisioning the village is too short, and we are working with the um, North District Office and the um, District Lands Office there, uh, together with the villagers, uh, to come up with a better proposal. Site formation works have commenced. There is an urgency. Uh, in terms of uh, project completion. We understand the village's concerns, and we will work with other government departments and uh, try our best to resolve the issues as far as possible. But we understand the urgency of the project. Next, Mr. Tony Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first, I thank the Secretary for clarifying the reply to my question re about uh, reply number 56 concerning the AAB. My other question has to do with DEVB W054 on the public works um, procurement um, and the review. I read from the reply that based on the review, we have also identified measures to enhance and promote site safety. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et so, for these measures identified, have they included uh, anything on enhancing the competitiveness under the existing tendering system? The second question. It's about the EVBW zero eight four. Here it sets out a table on road widening projects, and this is something new. So I'd like to know after their completion uh, something about their maintenance and repair. And um, the general public may be concerned that with uh, such heavy rains and some underground projects going on, we see the roads on uh, Hong Kong Island, etc. There is a need to strengthen uh, road maintenance, or will you just follow the existing practice every year, uh, or are you going to allocate more resources in this regard? I'll defer to the PS to take this question. First question about site safety. In our review of the tendering system, in terms of technical assessment, now the, we um, will uh, uh, accord more um, marks on the site safety performance, uh, and this will affect the tender result. As for 084, I'll defer to the CDD on maintenance and repair. I think Mr. Tony Chair is referring to cycling uh, track and the Hong Shui Q and Tin Ha Road and uh, Tan Kwai Chun Road widening project. And in fact, after the completion of the project, the maintenance will be uh, taken up by the highways department. And we also carry out uh, 
some targeted uh, maintenance project, but that depends on the um, road uh, situation. First round, Dr. Priscilla Lone. Chairman, a question for Secretary. In his speaking notes, he mentioned slope safety. And also um, the issue of uh, escalators. August last year, uh, uh, at the back of Lee Jong um, uh, swimming pool, I walked up to Chak On Estate. In fact, uh, Chak On Estate is regarded as a Siberia of Sam Shui Po. Many elderly people are living there. Elderly people have to walk and spend a lot of time to walk uh, from Chak On to the markets in Sam Shui Po. When I uh, paid a visit, it was typhoon signal number three. The rain was heavy. I think I did, did uh, file a written question. Um, the residents are subject to the elements of the weather, be it uh, heavy rain or strong sunshine. And I spent 30 minutes walking up that slope. Uh, we, were, we are young. And it's also very uh, windy. So is it possible to provide a set of escalators or lifts? In uh, Tenkao, um, I've noticed that there are uh, houses which um, are equipped with lifts, though um, these houses have only four stories, and they are indigenous uh, village houses said the speaker. And there is also um, a, I notice that um, there is a um, footbridge. In fact, quite a lot of escalators have been fitted to slopes. Now this one is also related to a slope and there is danger. I just want to know whether the uh, director of bureau will pay more attention to this. Um, is a very high slope, and the height is about six or seven stories, and the uh, steps um, uh, are at a very um, steep incline. Well, um, we've heard uh, Miss Leung's view. We will uh, take the matter up with the relevant policy bureau and follow up the matter up. We will make a referral. Next, Mr. Tan Ka Piu, he has his, uh, this is his first round. The paper has spoken a lot on increasing land supply and on the development of many projects. We welcome that on the whole. But with regard to the Lantau Development Committee, um, I want to speak on behalf of Muyu War. Uh, I don't need to speak for Tong Chong or, or Tayo. Now, uh, Mr. Chen, you need to pay $43 to go to uh, Muyu War one way. When Henry Tang was the Chief Secretary, there was a um, proposal to revitalize Mui War. It was assisted by Mr. Wang Kok Heng, but works have not started. Several hundred million dollars had been allocated, but works have not started, or works have progressed very slowly. The CEDD is taking the lead for the rehabilitation of the silver mine. And that is the only um, tourism attraction. And um, that is a very important tourist attraction, but uh, there has been no progress. Uh, under Program 1, uh, the uh, CDD has um, a tourism project, and under the um, uh, program and other programs on mining, but the progress or and the management of that project is very uh, poor. 
as for water. Now, you suspended the uh, village water supply scheme. Uh, that, in, that was in 2003, and uh, you stopped that. So um, now the economy is much better. Will you provide uh, portable potable water to villages which are not support the twenty villages which are not provided with um, potable water? In particular, Potoi. Uh, Mr. Horn will answer the first question as so water supply to villages. Mr. Lam will answer the question. Mr. Horn, concerning Mui Wu, I think Mr. Tang knows it. We have got the money. And we are doing the tendering exercise. In the tendering exercise, we have encountered some problems which uh, I am not, uh, which are not convenient for me to disclose here. As for the silver mine, I was involved in, and uh, some local people hoped that the silver mine, the so-called silver mine, could be developed into a tourism attraction. We did quite a lot of work. I went into, or rather, my colleagues went into that mine, and you know, or that, or that cavern. And if that cavern is to be opened to the public, uh, there are a lot of difficulties. There are many dark spots inside the cavern, and um, it was previously a mine, and there was, and it was quite dangerous at some spots. We would have signs. We will put up the signs and bring people to the entrance of the cave and also the history of the mine. But if we are to open up the uh, cave to the public, it is no easy task, and not too many people uh, will find that it's uh, suitable to go into uh, that cave. As for water supply to the villages, about 20 odd villages are not provided with potable water. But uh, this year, in this year, we will uh, provide uh, potable water to five villages, including uh, Tong A, uh, Lan Nai Wan, uh, Yun Tun Ha, so on and so forth. Um, they will be uh, provided with treated water. As for other villages which are not provided with treated water, we have talked to the district office and also the LCSD. As for Potai, the district office has provided water tanks, and if there is not enough water, um, water will be added, uh, will be brought to Potai. In Potoi, there are only 20 residents. If we are to provide treated water, we have to buy, we have to build five kilometers of mains, and it will be very costly. I um, just uh, give you some leeway. Uh, you still uh, can wait for the second round. Uh, Priscilla Long, the second round. Thank you, Chairman. Just one more word. You mentioned tree safety and slope safety. I hope the two bureaus can work together. I'm afraid that the THB will say that that is the portfolio of the DVB. Um, the problem of trees, slopes, uh, uh, problems. Um, the, the trees branch out, um, and I hope you will consider that together with the escalator. Next, Mr. Leung Chi Chang. First round. Hey, so, Guan Yu, concerning land supply, the administration is um, working hard to identify land for housing supply. And uh, there is a proposal of Building artificial islands. My question is on artificial islands. Now you need to conduct um, preliminary study on reclamation. You need to consider ecological assessment. With regard to public engagement and consultancy studies. 
um, they have to be done, and uh, and that, that that takes time. And how can you speed up the process? 另外，先所講咧，我哋誒第一輪嘅公眾諮詢做。The Prime Secretary, after the first round of public engagement, if we are to build artificial islands, it will be in the central waters. In the western and eastern waters, there are other consideration which do not allow us to conduct large-scale reclamation. As for speeding up the process, the coming technical study is very important. If the technical study can identify solutions to the technical problems, then in the next round of public engagement, we can um, get the support of the public uh, for our central uh, reclamation central waters. On the central um, um, artificial islands, um, they are not connected. Say if uh, you get a site in Yun Hong Sui Kyu, then people um, in the vicinity uh, will have special concerns. But if you have uh, you build an artificial island, and then the concern will only be those who are concerned about the environment and also um, the fishermen or those involved in marine traffic. The rest of the um, as for other people, they may not be so active in giving their views. So, uh, will then uh, the views be more lopsided uh, towards um, the environmental groups and also, uh, and also the um, related stakeholders? Will you uh, try to gauge the views of other citizens? The Prime Secretary. As said by the member concerning the artificial island, we have to consider um, rollings, um, sea traffic, operation of the port, impact on fisheries, impact on ocean, ecology, on water current, and water quality. And we also attach importance to the views of the residents in islands district. When we conduct the technical study, we will take the initiative to consult the views of the residents of the islands. And in the public engagement process, there will be different kinds of uh, exercises, including workshops and seminars. As for Mr. Leung's question on public consultation and allowing more stakeholders, more uh, groups in the community uh, to get involved, and there will be an informed uh, discussion, uh, we welcome his advice. Next, Mr. Tenka Pew, second round. In the past two weeks, um, a uh, 26 trade list um, uh, was made. Uh, we were told that it was a list for importation of labor, and some said it was a list for training. Yesterday, Chen Yun Han met the permanent secretary. Now, concerning your proposal, have you bypassed the LAB in making such a decision? I want a guarantee from you. As for the shortening of time frame, it can be shortened from one and a half year to half a year. Can you give us the uh, comfort that it is not a uh, way of uh, substantially uh, importing labor. If you shorten uh, the processing, can you extend the uh, recruitment period from four weeks to eight weeks? Uh, that will give people confidence. Uh, yes, the Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have no intention to get round the LAB. In fact, our proposal is that uh, we will um, do our preparatory work better in order to facilitate the LAB in, provide, in giving the approval. We want to provide more comprehensive and um, uh, ready information to the LAB. As for importation of labor, we've said it many times before at various occasions. And also, I said it at the beginning of this session. We will um, uh, subject to protecting job opportunities of local people and protecting uh, their reasonable income. 
uh, we will import labor. We have to con uh, consider the huge um, demand from our infrastructural projects and construction projects. We also need to provide time for upgrading skills and suitably importing labor on one hand will um, um, augment the progress of works on the other. It will also bring relief on the local labor market and the semi-skilled workers uh, will have a chance to be supervised by experienced skilled workers. Secretary, you haven't replied to me. How to strike a balance? If the administrative procedure is shortened, can you guarantee uh, that uh, as a form of protection that the recruitment period will be lengthened for um, public to have the impression that the Hong Kong government is also protecting the uh, jobs of local workers? Now, for the whole mechanism, we are able to strike a balance. I will note uh, I will jot down Mr. Tang's point, and uh, we will follow up uh, on this uh, suggestion. Mr. Lan Chi Chang, second round. Thank you, Chairman. Now, I note in Secretary's speaking note, he talks about heritage conservation. I agree in principle with the policy on revitalizing uh, schemes so that historic uh, buildings and monuments can be conserved. But let me give you an example about the Sun Yat-sen um, building. It's situated on government land. Uh, my example shows that the government is not um, doing uh, enough. Now, we understand that the building has been there for a long time. You can say that it's uh, all along been used by a private uh, occupant, and if you want to um, so-called uh, evict the private uh, occupiers, you need to come up with a reprovision uh, or decanting. Um, Procedures and this building is getting old. It might is dilapidated and it might um, be collapsed. So my question is whether the license can be uh, building license can be changed uh, to another building. Well, all along the government hasn't any um, clear policy for uh, conserving these historic buildings. So my question is this. Secretary, on heritage conservation, do you have a um, flexible policy for the purpose of conserving these historic buildings? For this, um, in this example, does it uh, can this apply? For this um, example in Hapak Lai, I will defer to the permanent secretary. But on the whole. The government's position is that we need to respect private property rights, and then we need to consider how we can provide a practical and feasible solution to um, con on a heritage conservation on a sustainable basis. We have had a number of examples. We will also conduct a review with the AAB, and earlier on in the meeting, we mentioned that about the in the uh, in about the middle of this year, we will launch a public consultation. Now, about this Ha Park Lai um, building, I will defer to Mr. Lam to uh, say more on this. All right, please be brief. Uh, we have other members who uh, will just come in and want to ask questions. Well, thank you, Mr. Long, for helping us in uh, the discussion work. About that, um, heritage is. Uh, Occupied by a private occupier, and uh, it's situated on government land. And we have been discussing with the relevant uh, parties, and they are unwilling to move out for uh, our renovation. And through members and uh, other uh, 
parties would like to uh, continue with delays work for them to uh, move out and then under the existing policy these individuals may be given the relevant um decanting uh, arrangements i hope that they will actively consider our proposals some more members for the first round mr james toe one uh, two problems. One, uh, two questions. One major, one minor. The first one, even after training the fresh blood into uh, in the construction industry, about only ten to twenty percent will be remaining in the trade. So that's according to the construction industry. But according to the CIC, the retention rate is as high as seventy to eighty percent. So on these two versions. Does the government consider there is a discrepancy, um, and are there any um, anything hidden uh, behind? Um, are the versions true, or uh, is either side manipulating the figures? Second question: The ID of uh, workers at site will be recorded, but I think, or as I understand the system, as far as it is concerned. The administration should not expect any organization to know in each and every second or minute uh, which worker is working where. This has to do with privacy. I think the site management should be able to provide information should any accidents arise. But the administration should not be able to find out uh, in a system, um, for example, where Wu Chi Wai is at a particular time frame. And just I just found it out uh, when I chatted with uh, some uh, members of the industry. Now, about young people staying in the construction industry. Uh, after training, and the CIC has a mechanism. They have a trainee survey. After half a year and uh, a year, they track whether these uh, trainees will stay behind. And according to them, about 60% of the trainees uh, would um, be retained. And according to the Construction Workers Registration Ordinance, contractors regulated by the ordinance are required to provide attendance records of workers to the CIC and we can analyze the data uh, to find out the uh, situ the uh, manpower situation in the construction industry but it doesn't mean that uh, the record will contain the whereabouts of uh, every worker every second I oppose that um, you should not use ID cards. It should be obliterated. There should be another unique idea. Uh, ID in your infamy, uh, in your data. You should not be able to find out a particular worker. Say, Mr. Paul Chan, um, uh, where he went to, or uh, where he was working yesterday. You yes, you could. Uh, Keep statistics based on the data, um, their experience, their wages, etc. But you should not be able to know the whereabouts of any particular person at any particular time. I oppose that. Yes, I've noted members' view. We are um, keeping information on the, the member on workers' registration card and the attendance. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. Five quests. Um, uh, I have a number of questions. Uh, that is uh, um, reply number zero eight nine and one four six on the environmental friendly link system in Kowloon East. Now for the EFLS environmentally friendly linkage system. So far, the views have been uh, that the monorail will be developed, and we have also had alternatives, for example, environmental f environmentally friendly um, trams. And uh, when this is 
further uh, looked into, will the administration consider considering uh, uh, all the environmentally friendly uh, modes of transport and set out all the pros and cons for us to consider how to achieve cost effectiveness? Second question. That is reply number 90, DVBW 960. My question number 1622. I note from the reply that the CEDD will, in the coming 12 months, not carry out any site formation work. So my question is this. This is part three of my question, a short reply. Can you tell me what it means? It's hard for me to imagine that in the coming 12 months, no project involving land formation will commence. Does it mean that some land development work will not be um, proceeded with in the coming next month because of some problems? I will defer to my uh, two directors to take the two questions. On the environmental friendly linkage system, the simple answer is that in the coming uh, detailed study or in depth study, we will look at all the uh, options uh, elevated or at grade transport. We have conducted a detailed transport assessment in Kowloon Bay and Kun Tong, the two action areas, because the areas are quite small. With its uh, with their transformation and the, and a high demand for uh, public transport, we cannot just rely on uh, at grade transport. So um, during the transformation, we are going to introduce a new form of environmental fr uh, friendly uh, linkage system, and then we will also develop a new mode of transport. Maybe it will be elevated or at grade. For the section um, leading to Kowloon Bay, this will be elevated um, uh, uh, to the. Um, uh, uh, but as I said, in the uh, during the details of the stage, we will further explore into the pros and cons of various uh, transfer systems. As director, third question of Mr. Wushiwai has to do with whether. There will be new projects under CDD, and whether land will be has to be provided for the projects. And uh, there are different parts of the question: uh, those completed, those ongoing, and those uh, to be commenced. And according to our work schedule, indeed, there are no projects involving major land formation that will commence in the next twelve months. But it is not related to land supply. CDD is responsible for major land formation and infrastructure works only. These two are not related. We have just two minutes left. I don't think it is sufficient to allow for a third round or I can only uh, give Mr. Hong Kong two minutes, third round. Chairman, thank you. These two minutes are very important. I hope the Director of Water Services or the Secretary for Development can um, tell me if water charges will be increased. Will the administration consult the general public and let's go first before deciding to raise the water charges? This is the third round. I hope the administration will not avoid my question. Secretary? Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, of course, we need to when we need to adjust uh, charges. We need to brief the panel and uh, explain to members. Water charges have remained the same for over the past 19 years since 2010. In terms of water conservation, uh, it, under the water total water management uh, strategy, we have been. following the direction of water conservation, and this will be an ongoing effort. But in terms of water charges, about 14% of users currently are not required to pay any water charges, and water charges uh, remain at a very low rate in terms of um, 
cost recovery. We would like to gradually recover costs, and that's the purpose. I hope the administration. Would consult the uh, electrical first. Don't make the decision first before cons uh, consulting us. It has to do with people's livelihood. We think that the government should do more on uh, water conservation before uh, rolling out the administrative measure of increasing water charges. All right, noted. So much for this session.